Hi everyone, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and in this video we're going to be talking about eyepieces, how to choose them, what the different specifications are, just how to get a good range uh, for the telescope that you might have just purchased or maybe if you need to add on to an existing telescope and eyepiece collection. Uh, the first thing you need to know is that the telescope collects the light and it's the eyepiece in the back of the telescope that actually does the magnification. Different objects in the sky require different magnifications, so you're not usually just using one eyepiece for everything. Deep sky objects, for the majority of the time, require fairly low power and a wide field of view. There's a few exceptions, but in general, low power for the big deep sky objects. And planetary detail, you usually require some pretty high power because planets, uh, even though they're, they're closer to us than a nebula, they're very small in the sky, so uh, high power is good for, uh, for planetary detail. Uh, when you get done with your collection, usually you'll have a range. You'll have a low power, maybe a medium power for some certain things, and then high power for planets. Uh, you might also consider a Barlow lens, which is a doubler, or in some cases a tripler. It will take the eyepiece that you've got and double the magnification. So when you're choosing your eyepieces, you might want to keep a Barlow in mind so you don't overlap with some of the magnifications. Anyways, let's talk about some of the specific details of the eyepieces and uh, get a little further into it. One of the most basic uh, specs of an eyepiece is the focal length. Uh, that will tell you what the magnification will be. And if you just look at an eyepiece, you can't tell what power it is because it depends on what telescope you put it in. Uh, the reason for that is the focal length of the eyepiece interacts with the focal length of the telescope. So in this case, this is a 80mm uh, refractor, and if you look on the label, you'll find out what the focal length is. This one is 400 millimeters. If you look on an eyepiece, it also has a focal length of its own, 18, 14 and a half, 12. So just for example, if you put a 10 millimeter eyepiece into this, the formula to, f to figure the power out is the focal length of the telescope, 400, divided by the eyepiece focal length, 10 millimeter. So in this case, 400 divided by 10, that's 40 power. So if you think about that formula, it's the exact opposite of what you usually think. This is a... Uh, 10 millimeter eyepiece, which is moderate to high power, a 25 millimeter in this case would be 16 power. So the lower the number on the eyepiece, the higher the magnification. Another important specification of the eyepiece is the field of view, and that's usually listed on the eyepiece itself. Uh, in this case, this is a 20 millimeter focal length, and right next to it, it says 66 degree apparent field of view. Each eyepiece has its own inherent apparent field of view. That's not the true field. That's uh, the 66 degree apparent field is the circle that you see when you look through it. It's a certain uh, degree of, uh, of angle. To figure out the true field of view, which is the actual field of view in the sky that you'll see, there's another little formula. It's a fairly simple one. It's the apparent field of view of the eyepiece divided by the magnification. So in this case, with that previous telescope I showed you, uh, 20 millimeters, 400 millimeter focal length, so that's 20 power and the apparent field of view 66 divided by the magnification 20 yields a 3.3 field of view, 3.3 uh, degree field of view with this eyepiece. Now another eyepiece might have a different field of view. This is a plossel. Uh, they're generally 50, 52 degree field of view. So at the same magnification, this shows you a little bit less field of view in the sky. Um, uh, the apparent field of view 52 divided by 20 magnification. So this is a 2.6 degree field and this is a 3.3 degree field of view. Wider field, even though they're the exact same magnification. Another important specification of an eyepiece is the eye relief. Now, eye relief is the vertical distance from the top of the eyepiece upwards to where your eyeball is supposed to sit in order to see the entire field of view. If you're too far away from the eye relief, you'll just see the central area of the image and you're losing all the stuff at the edge. In the case of this plossel, this is a 6.3 millimeter plossel with a fairly small window because as plossels go higher magnification, the window gets a little smaller and therefore the eye relief gets smaller as well. So in this case, it's 4.1 millimeters. That means your eye has to sit just four millimeters above uh, the surface in order to see the entire field of view. That's not a very long eye relief. There are other eyepieces that have long eye relief as one of their features. In this case, this is a 6 millimeter eyepiece, so about the same magnification as this plossel, but this one boasts a 20 millimeter eye relief. You can already see the 
window is bigger on this, and your eye sits 20 millimeters, almost one inch above the surface. Well, why is that important? If you wear glasses, it's impossible to get your eyes four millimeters away from this eyepiece. Uh, your glasses are in the way, your eye sits a bit behind the glasses. So this is probably not very usable for an eyeglass wearer. Whereas this, your eyeglasses will sit right on the surface and your eye sits comfortably above 20 millimeters uh, uh, above the lens. You gotta glue your eyeball to the top of one of these. So in general, long eye relief is a nice feature to have. Um, low magnification eyepieces don't matter so much because pretty much all low magnification eyepieces have long eye relief. But as the powers go up, some eyepieces it gets a little small, so a long eye relief eyepiece, it's a nice feature to have. Another thing you might have noticed behind me are the different sizes of the eyepieces. Uh, in addition to the standard 1.25 inch barrel, which pretty much any telescope um, can accept, there are two inch eyepieces. Now you can see the difference, two inch barrel, inch and a quarter barrel. Two inch eyepieces exists for very low power, very wide field of view. There's no such thing as a high power two inch eyepiece, but at low power you can get a wider field of view than you can at inch and a quarter. Any, well, most refractors, most high-end refractors above 80 millimeters will accept a two inch eyepiece. They have a two inch focuser. Um, a reflector, usually eight inches or above, will also have a two inch focuser. So if you've got that kind of a telescope that has a two inch focuser, you can use a two inch eyepiece. Now, just to compare, here's a 40 millimeter plossal, inch and a quarter, and 38 millimeter two inch. So they're roughly the same magnification. Well, a plossal, you're limited to 43 degree apparent field of view because the barrel, inch and a quarter, the, at that low power, the eyepiece can't see past its barrel very well. So it has a 43 degree apparent field. At two inches, this eyepiece has a 70 degree field of view. So same magnification, not quite double the field, but pretty darn close to double the field of view, 70 versus 43. So a much wider expanse in the sky. So you're looking at the Andromeda galaxy. That's a very big object. You can fit several, you can fit, uh, several full moons across uh, the Andromeda galaxy. It's many degrees wide. Well, to get the entire thing in one field of view usually requires a very low power two inch eyepiece. So two inch eyepieces is a good extension to your eyepiece range for the very wide fields of view. You might run across a feature of some eyepieces where they say the eyepiece is parfocal with other ones in the line. Well, parfocal means it's at the same focus point as the rest of the eyepieces, meaning you don't have to change focus when you change eyepieces. So if you look at a line like these guys, the long eye relief, they're parfocal along the line, which means when I stick this eyepiece in the, into the telescope and I focus for it, I can pull it out and pop the six millimeter in and expect the focus to remain the same. I don't have to tweak the focus when I change eyepieces. That won't be the case when you're going from this eyepiece to, say, this eyepiece, an entirely different line of eyepieces. But along the same line, many eyepiece lines will be parfocal. So those are the standard eyepieces, different focal lengths, different fields of view, uh, different um, eye reliefs. There are some specialty eyepieces that have different features that you may not find on the regular eyepieces. Uh, one thing is a zoom eyepiece. So far I've talked about a specific focal length eyepiece, a 20 millimeter, a 40 millimeter. Well, an eyepiece like this has a range. Uh, this is a seven to 21 millimeters. So you adjust the barrel and it zooms from 21 millimeter at the low power up to seven millimeter at the high power. There's different zooms, they have slightly different focal lengths, but they all do about the same thing. They, they change the magnification without having to pop different eyepieces into the telescope. That can be pretty handy when you don't have a lot of room in your case or you just, you don't want to take a lot of stuff with you. Find something at low power and then zoom up to high magnification. It's very nice. There are some trade-offs. The, the biggest trade-off is the field of view. A zoom eyepiece is never, or never really as wide field of view as a fixed focal length. So something like this eyepiece, if I compared it with the same focal length of a, of a fixed magnification eyepiece, I'd see a bit wider field of view out of the fixed eyepiece. But the fixed eyepiece, if I want to change power, I've got to pop it out, put a different one in. So a zoom eyepiece can be very handy to give you different magnifications all in one.
Another specialty eyepiece design is a illuminated reticle eyepiece. It can be any different design of eyepiece, but the feature is a crosshair through the middle of the eyepiece, and then usually a illuminated reticle on the side, or an illuminator, to illuminate the reticle, uh, so at night you can see the, the crosshair. This one's a 20 millimeter. This is great for when you're using a computerized telescope and you're doing the alignment and you want to make sure the star is dead center in the field of view. Pop the uh, reticle eyepiece inside, put the star right on the crosshair, and you know you're dead center for the, uh, for the computer alignment. Another function of these eyepieces would be for guiding. If you didn't want to use an auto guide, if you wanted to manually guide, usually you use a fairly high power illuminated reticle, put the star right on the crosshair, and as you're taking your exposure, you're keeping the star dead center using the hand controller, and you know the, the picture will come out good with very good tracking at the end. All right, so there you have a basic overview of eyepieces, the basic specs from the focal length to the field of view to the eye relief, among, among other things. Uh, hopefully that will give you a good understanding of how to choose uh, your next eyepiece in the line. If you're looking for a set, let's say you have a telescope, it comes with a 25 and a 10 millimeter, which is uh, some standard eyepieces that may come with your telescope. The next step might be higher magnification, so say a, a 5 millimeter. Uh, that'll be good for moon and planetary high magnification detail. You can add a low power eyepiece on the other end of the spectrum, a 32 or a 40 millimeter, giving you a nice range from 5, 10, 25, 40, a nice range to cover the entire uh, view of any object that you can see. Uh, keep in mind a Barlow as well. Remember, that doubles the power. So if you have your 25 and your 10, well, now you've got a 12 and a half and a 5. So do a little math and see where the focal lengths end up so you don't duplicate something using a Barlow. But a Barlow is a good, efficient way of getting more eyepieces without having to spend the money on more eyepieces. If you've got two eyepieces and a Barlow, you basically have four magnifications. Anyways, I hope this helps you uh, in your decision on how to buy uh, different eyepieces. Thank you very much. Clear skies.